Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Iron Panther Presents. Today, we move on with the Shy Season 3, Episode 4, and what's going on with these different families, what we've learned by new characters that have been introduced, and what does it mean for the rest of the season. Um, I'm here, Chris. Thank you very much for joining hey. me. What's going on, sir? Hi, hi. Before we get started, I, I want to say this. I want to say this from now on. I realize now that Season 3 is a reboot for this series. Like the writers and creators of this show have done away with season one and two, no matter what storylines were, were started in them, and they're making a whole new show. And therefore, we just need to get on board and stop bringing up old stuff. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't want to, I'm not going to waste any more video time bringing up all the shit that they should be going through that they started in season one and two, because clearly they're like, it's a new day, it's a new show, and let's get to it. So anyway, so for example, Keisha. So the search for Keisha turned to uh, Dre and Ronnie, uh, taking down a convicted rapist uh, named Jeremiah, who ended up killing another pedophile. black woman. Hmm? Was he a pedophile too, or he was? Yeah, a yeah, man, but he's, yeah, yeah. He's but, he, but he went to jail for rape, according to Ronnie. But he also was a pedophile. Ronnie found uh, hard copy photos of little girls, which he took pictures of, showed Dre, and Dre, without talking to Nina, went straight out there with Ronnie and to find this man, beat him up, and. Oh, and thankfully, in a way, he actually turned out to be a real criminal. Because the last time Ronnie went out there to try to avenge someone, he killed someone that did not actually commit the murder. So this time, he actually was correct, um, and he took down this man. Um, it was interesting, though, that when they found the body, and they had the cops out there, Dre, Nina, um, find the body. Dre, no, excuse me, Dre and Ronnie find the body. Dre calls Nina to come out there and see this dead girl without confirming it's in fact Keisha. Like, to me that, it, she should have took a few minutes to say, let me, let me see, let me make sure before I call my wife to tell her our daughter's dead. And then she had to come out there and it'd be like, oh, oh, I'm sorry, it, it's somebody else. Like, that, that well, I mean. I, I kind of looked at it a little, I, I hear you and you're right, but I also looked at it in the sense of emotionally, and, and I don't know, I don't know, I would possibly do this too, especially if I know that someone's really close to someone and someone, their loved one's dead. I would find it appropriate that they will be the first ones to view the body before anybody else, even including myself, especially if I'm not their flesh and flesh and blood. You know what I mean? But no, you're absolutely right because they were wrong in retrospect now, but you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I mean, that's retrospect, but in a sense, the I emotionally would kind of do the same thing, especially if, especially if you know, one thing that I know is with Dre, which is why she's doing a lot of things on her own, is that, is that her wife is a wreck. She, she can't, like you saw that during the whole support group. She, she, there's, she, she can't function correctly, which is why she has burdened herself with the ones that to, 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 to be, to be the, the, the person who's going to take charge because her wife is, is too much of a wreck. And not to mention every time even her wife even mentions Keisha's name, like she's, she just gets overwhelmed. So I, I felt that's what she was kind of, I thought that's what she was doing. Cause I felt like, especially with Dre's face initially, I guess, as they're walking the body, she, they, it, I, I felt like they both damn well knew that it was Keisha walking up to the body. Um, you know what I mean? Um, but, and then it's just, and, but you saw, and this is where I guess the good acting comes in is that Dre, uh, like her, 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 her face turned from pure, like, Oh my God. Right. And then to like curiosity to, Oh shit. Wait. Oh yeah. And he's like, can you turn the body? Can you turn the body? She has a tattoo. You know what I mean? So, you know, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I thought that was a, like, you know, and, and I saw that coming too. <laughs> when they did that flashback with the tattoo, I didn't, it, I knew it was going to be either doing one or two things. Either it was going to showcase to Keisha that Dre was pretty cool and she ain't going to just snitch on her. It's like, oh, maybe my mom's uh, wife ain't as bad as I thought she was going to be. You know what I mean? But, uh, but no, it was more of a callback uh, later on, you know, to when they actually find the body of a, uh, of, of a deceased girl, which somehow, so somehow that white dude was involved. 
So I don't. So, you know. so I'm saying, no. He said, he said, um, you know, I just wanted to talk to her. I didn't mean to hurt her. She's at the beach. So he did kill that girl. But um, uh, but it's yeah. funny you should bring up the flashback because I didn't even think it was real because when Dre when when the, when the image ended, like Keisha got hit by a car and then she woke up. Oh oh oh! So you thought the whole thing was? Yeah, oh, gotcha. I got you. And then so for it for it, for it to real be a real tattoo, I was like, so how much of that nightmare was true? And then I was like, so th- I was like, oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Overall, yeah. overall with the investigation. They hired uh, an investigator who wants another five thousand dollars. That seems like a lot of money, but they haven't. To me, they haven't done the basic things of talking to her friends, talking to her track teammates. Kevin gets on her computer and uh, Keisha's computer in episode two. He looks through some of her chats. He, you know, he, you know, he texts one of her friends to see if she knows anything where Keisha's at. But no one's talked to Keisha's friends. Um, well, Neil- well, uh, what's his face did? Um- Kevin did. Kevin talked to um, two of her homegirls, even though one of her homegirls apparently wasn't necessarily a homegirl because she made it even seem like, like, oh, everyone hated her. You know what I mean? But I'm saying... But, but she was the one that gave that name up. Uh, but, but, but since Kevin since Kevin is not, a, once again, for some reason, not talking to his parents about what he's doing to try to find his sister, like, you would think that the, that the, that the parents would be like, let's find her friends. The, the, the investigator that they hired, whoever this person is, you talk to the track mates. Where's Nina's two sisters, the aunties in episode one at the at the wedding, who was teasing Keisha about the fact that she was dating an older man? Like, where? Why are they not there supporting Nina th- during this during this crisis and letting her know what they know about her? I mean, They're it's like shit. The fact, the fact that you can make your, make fun of your own nieces, calling them fat, the fast, that told me everything. I'm not surprised they ain't in their life right now because they, you know, yo, I'm 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 beyond yo. You can have. I'm sorry. It's possible that you can have family members who you don't want to have anything to do with because they're no no good. You know what I mean? And and I don't know. It's funny you brought that up because that was one of the confusing the things that kind of pissed me off in that first episode, especially when I found out that they, that was their niece. Like, how can you talk about your own niece like that? Like, how much... You obviously don't love them. You l- love her if you're going to talk shit like that. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I and agree. Their face. I agree. So, no, I'm not surprised they're not in there. And they shouldn't be because, for one, it will piss me off because they're assholes. You know what I mean? If the writers want to be consistent, at least if they're going to introduce them because they never were in season one or two. If they're going to be around for season, for episode one, you would think they'd be a part of the season. I understand that they yeah. should be around. Yeah, or, or, or who knows? I don't know. Maybe they came out of, out of town to witness their sister getting married. Maybe. All right. Out of town family members. You know what I mean? Maybe. All right. So, uh, All right. and then... But so then, uh, again, so we, we, they look at, again, where's Nuck as we end this discussion? Nuck, about- if you buck, boy, Nuck, if you buck, boy. Awesome song. Anyway, sorry. I can't help it. Anytime you say Nuck, I keep thinking of Nuck if you buck. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Nuck, where is he, right? Where the fuck is this man <laughs> that was supposed to be the last one to talk to Nina? It's really getting on my damn nerves. He was in last week's episode. They need to, they need to tie up this Nuck issue, all right? Just to say they talked to him. He didn't see her. He didn't see, respond to her text. They broke up or some shit. But, like, stop the storyline, or you shouldn't have brought it up in the first damn place. It just, it just irritates me. Yeah. So let's talk about Kevin. So Kevin is growing up, and uh, he's stepping up, I like to well, say. Well, Tyreek, all right. All right. <laughs> all right, Tyreek. Well, I, I, actually, I'll, I'll probably put Jake in that category right now. But, but, oh, but, yeah. but for Kevin... <laughs> Kevin defends his new love, uh, Gemma, uh, from Jake again, as they're talking with Papa about spilling the tea, about what's going on with the women in their life, which was always hilarious. I love to see Papa. Um, yeah. The duality, again, of how Jake sees Gemma and how Kevin sees Gemma are two very different things. So you got uh, Jake telling Papa that she's a black girl trying to act white. You got Kevin saying, no, she's a, she's a woman who comes from money. She knows how to work the system. She speaks French. And she just basically wants us to be better representations of our black people since these, these other white people we're with don't see black people very often. And she just, she just wants us to be better. And, and, and then, he, I mean, he, uh, Kevin almost whoops um, Jake's ass for calling her a bitch for the second time. So, I mean, he's really, he's really stepping to this, you know, I'm a man and this is my woman type of thing. And I, I really thought that was good. Hmm. Um, so, and then what else we got? And then we got, um, and then he defends his sister. Kevin uh, punches out the oh, yeah. uh, customer. Rightfully so. Yep, because he was talking all kinds of shit don't, and don't know who yeah, that is. Yeah, talking about like, say, damn, they're still looking for this bitch? That, that moment, I would have I messed him up. Yeah. 
So Gemma St. John, um, she's a great addition to this show. I think this episode shows she's going to be around, unlike Ebony and some of the other love interests that Kevin has had. Uh, Kevin, her Kevin mom loves her, which is great. Um, in one episode, Gemma teaches uh, Kevin how, how to speak properly with grammar. She teaches him about proper black representation in history, and she teaches him about colorism. I was like, that's all. Oh, it's a moment all in one, yeah. I was like, <clears throat> I mean, she is, she, she is well-developed as a character very, very quickly, and I hope we do see more of her. Um, let's talk about Otis Perry slash Dota, who is obviously at some level based on James St. Patrick, like at some level. This guy is a... A, a gangster who says, I want to go into politics because I, I, wasn't, I wasn't allowed to do that when I was a kid. I want to show these people I can grow up to be more than just a gangster. And I was like, there you go, James. Like, there you go. I was like, yeah, I was looking more like string a bell. Wait, so let's talk about his wife. Candy plays uh, his wife uh, and Ros uh, Rosalind uh, Perry, uh, Rose, as he refers to her. Uh, when, as we're introduced to her, she's coming into his pizza shop slash uh, uh, political headquarters. And I'm interested how no one knows who she is. The black woman who's at the table asks who she is. Do you have an appointment? She says, no, this yeah. is my husband. The guy who she throws the code at seems to have no idea also who she is. Um, and even throughout the episode, you know, Otis and Rose seem very, very distant, you know, and, and there was no hugging, no kissing. He's like, how you been? It's like, how, where, how, where was she? What is their relationship? Even within the car, when they're in the limo at that night and, and Jake is asleep, he, he, um, Rose tries to get close to Perry and Otis is like, hey, you know, like, we're not going to get into this. Like, this is about business. So yeah. I'm like, it's, it's, it's very, you know, strained relationship, a very complicated relationship, it yeah. seems like. You, I, I thought it was awesome how they brought it on, 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 you know, on the screen because, yeah, like the people, her, her, his, his people didn't know who she was, but man, he he his face was like holy shit! Like like he hasn't seen her in years. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Rose was not at the house in previous episodes when Jake came home from school, and and you know, and Otis is like, you know, get get your shoes get your shoes off the off the the, the hardwood floors and stuff like that. So she clearly doesn't live with him. Nope. You know what I'm saying? Um. So it'd be, again, where she come from? I hope they get into her backstory. I want to talk about Jake though. So let's get you bring up him. I like this. I like that Jake is is showing maturity in this episode for once. Um, uh, for example, when when he sees Gemma's uh, dad, Marcus Marcus St. John, at the party, and he and he hears that you know her dad has money, he quickly introduces Otis, you know, to to Marcus. You know, he puts on this whole show about you know this is my dad, and then he sees how Otis jumps on that and then uses Jake's story of, you know, his dad, di his brother dying, his mom is in rehab, which is some bullshit. He ha Jake has to see that Otis is making up this whole damn story to get Marcus and the other rich people around there on board with him. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, right. like, how, I like how Jake kind of kind of stepped it up a little bit to be like, I can use this to my advantage and to help my, my new adoptive dad. Tell me why when, when he did that, I – the look that Otis initially gave, I was waiting for them to have a, a scene where the back in the car said, nigga, what you, what you telling them that for? Like, I was waiting for him to put the hurting on him. Like, she said, you will never be my son. Like, I don't know why. But I really thought, because he had that stern look like, it's like, father. Like, like I, don't, I don't know why, but I thought he was just going to go beast mode for some reason. You know, but, but like you said, he kind of went with it. So, Dude, I think, I think it was the opposite. I think that he was surprised that, J again, Jake could do it on his own. That Jake saw what Otis ah. saw was like, this is an opportunity. Because he had that story ready to roll. I mean, he was like, this, he's, a, he's an example of, of the neighborhood. Again, his brother was murdered. His, his mom is in rehab. Like, once he saw that Jake was on board with this, I think, and that's why he saw the potential in him. Because that's so, why yeah, he So, so that, sh that moment that showed the potential of, of him being great. Something he could be a future. He could be a future. You know what I'm saying? Something so there, something that Reg didn't have, which initially Otis thought Reg could have, and then realized he does not. <laughs> no. No. Um. So I think he sees that. I think now I think he sees it in Jake. I like the um the duality that the contrast that as Otis is trying to build his relationship with people of money, um, his counterpart, you know, um, you know, Camille Halloway. 
um, is building her relationship in the church, you know, back in the community, right? And we're introduced to her. I mean, she gives her story, the good and the bad. She knows who Otis slash Dota is, which I hope turns into something. I mean, I hope as a, you know, that she's, you know, cunning enough to use that information that Otis is, is actually a known drug dealer and, and, and gang member without getting it. herself murdered. But what if, what if she was one of his drug runs back in the day? Wouldn't that be crazy? No, nah, but that'd be so fucked up. That'd be so messed up. Like you got two candidates for Chicago being both like drug dealers. Like that, that ain't cool. Actually, that would be like so stereotypical. I don't know. What do you, what do you think about that? So it's funny you should bring that up because my, my next comment was that even though she's in the church, like she's not a saint because it shows that she's paying off Papa's dad to even speak at the church, right? So she's not as squeaky. She, not that she tried to be clean, but she's not as up as, as up as upcoming as she tries to act upstanding as she act like she is. And Papa's not happy about that. She's like, you know, like, you know, what is she paying for? Why is she paying you off? So it'd be interesting to see if she does have some type of, you know, underworld background. And it would be interesting if there were business partners, business, you know, you know, um, competitors yeah. at some point. Like that would be that would make the story more interesting, right? Yeah. Um, because of how did she know about Dota? And, and again, what she's going to use with, with that with that information. All right. So before we close this out, let's talk about Emmett and Tiffany. Uh, in this episode, uh, Emmett is, uh, for some reason, taking parenting advice from Darnell, uh, his daddy, who was so bad. Emmett doesn't even call him daddy. Um, and uh, he gives some very ratchet but realistic advice to this to his son, I have to say. Like, I was very disappointed in some of the language he was using and his logic, but I can see it really happening in real bro, life. She, she didn't give you a blowjob. She didn't blow you up. Or like, bro, really? This, you know what I mean? He's like, what, what's her sign? Oh, she definitely cheap. Oh, she a Scorpio. Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually, yo, and that's why I say anything dealing with Emmett, except with the exception of, of, of his mother. It, it's, it's, it's comic relief, man. And his father is proof of that shit, man. Oh, my God. He's like, oh, yeah, is this Scor oh, she's Scorpio? Yeah, 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 she cheating on your ass. I'm like, bro. He's <laughs> like, go through her phone immediately and find out who. I was like, what are you doing? And, and as, Tiffany, as Tiffany pointed out when they were in, in counseling, why is Emmett, why is Emmett taking advice from his dad? But let's look at Emmett. Emmett, three baby, three kids by three different women. His dad, five kids, seven kids by five different women. They're, they're the same now, person. I'm getting divorced now. Yeah. They, they are the same person, you know? So, um, but that being said, uh, the irony I, I wanted to point out is that with Tiffany, uh, Tiffany's out there selling her weed as she does. A, uh, a customer um, says, if you, if, how, how is your, your man fucking you? And if you would like some quote, good dick, um, please come back here. Um, some more ratchetness in this show. And her response is, uh, I'm good. Emmett and I have something deeper than that. And that sounds very positive until you go back and look at Emmett, who spends the entire episode just trying to figure out why he's not having sex and, and to get sex out of Tiffany. Yeah. So it seems that they have yeah. different points. Yeah, it, it shows that there were two different pages. I mean, it seemed like Tiffany thought they were in a good good place and Emma's like, no, we're not. You know what I mean? So, I mean, which is why I guess they, they did the whole couple, couple counseling thing. But, and even that, that turn kind of like ratchets it by itself. You know what I mean? You know, but. Uh, which is interesting because I think the couple counseling was actually, he said court directed. Like, I think they're in courts of uh, couples counseling partly because she's asking for child support. I think it's part of the child support process. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, so they're still legally bound by that. Okay, okay. So, so, okay. So they still have to do that. Okay. I think, I think, um, cause his dad mentioned, you know, why, why are you going to like court directed counseling? He said something like that. Um, and uh, during the counseling, Tiffany reveals that the main reason she's not having sex with Emmett is because she doesn't want to get pregnant again. That sounds very responsible. And I understand she continues to, they, they continue to argue about what kind of birth control to use. That's responsible. I understand. What I don't understand is how this episode ends with them having unprotected sex. How do you know? How do you know they had unprotected sex? I have a feeling, even with that that that, that comment, comment and whatnot, when he brought it up, she was upset, right? But then he followed up by making it a point to make sure that he did everything that she wanted by, by putting all the candles and whatnot. That made me think that maybe he did 
put on the condoms and not just try to just say, say, hey, well, I don't feel like wearing a condom. How about you just use birth control? You know what I mean? I believe the fact that they were still arguing about it at the end of counseling, everything he did was because he listened to Sonny. Sonny gave him great advice. Sonny never said put on a condom. If, if he, if he put, used any kind of protection, they would have brought it up during the scene to let you know they're making some kind of mature progress. I truly believe, just like they did last season, and they want to act like they didn't, they had unprotected sex again. And like last season, she's going to pop up saying, I think I'm pregnant, which, again, they totally forgot about. And she's going to once again in this season go, I think I'm pregnant. I promise you they did not use birth control. I, I, I truly doubt it. Or so maybe, yeah. you know, I don't know. Ho ho hopefully maybe his pullout game is strong. I don't know. <clears throat> as ratchet as, as this dialogue gets in this show, I'm so surprised he didn't say that during counseling. I'm surprised he didn't say it that night. Like, she's like, you better go find a condom. And he's like, no, baby, I'm going to pull out. I, I would not have put it past this show to put that in dialogue. And I'm so surprised he didn't say it. Yeah. But what do you think about Ronnie, uh, this arc period? Like, what do, you, what do you think about him in season three? Do you think he's doing a good job as far as trying to right his wrongs by trying to become a, de a detective for this missing girl who he knew nothing about, but he feels like that's going to save his soul? What, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you think about no, that? I, I, think, I, think, I think they're working on Ronnie's redemption story. I mean, I think it's as good as they're trying to do it with the, with the, with the reboot. Um, and the fact that he feels like a voice from on high is guiding him towards this direction. I mean, I think, again, they're trying to, they're trying to push him towards that, you know, that Christian thing with, with Papa's dad. Um, I, I think it's good. I mean, I, I want him not to be eating out of trash cans anymore. I mean, that's a, that's a bit much. I mean, he, he did have a, a Charlene, I think was her name last week. You know, I'm pretty sure she could feed him every once in a while. I mean, I don't know why he's doing that right now. Because um, they're at Sonny's and Lala makes the best freaking meals. I'm surprised she wasn't even in this episode. And I'm also surprised that Sonny has not brought up the fact that Emmett has been using his restaurant and very likely his food to make money behind his back. That should have been brought up in this, in, in this episode, especially with, all the, uh, with Sonny giving all kinds of advice to him. That really should have been brought up. But anyway, uh, that's that, that's all I got. What you got for the, anything else? No, no, no. I'm I'm looking forward to to see the uh, these other final five episodes. Um, I I eventually want to see a decent lead <laughs> on what's going on with 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 with, with Keisha. Um, I know that I think they'll probably say that until like episode six, kind of drag it out a little bit. But uh, but other than that, I I found this episode you know uh, very 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 decent. I uh, I, I, I personally love what they're doing, especially with the character of Kevin, you know, doing with Kevin's character. Um, you know, not only with the girlfriend thing, but just more of like, like the whole idea of him losing his sister and him not wanting to bring it up to folks and, and just kind of just the, the pain that he's internalizing himself. So, I, um, I, you know, I think he's, he's, he's great. You know, <laughs> the actor's great. He was great in, uh, Moonlight, uh, uh, so, you know, and again, he's doing it big here. So I can't wait for the next episode to see more of Kevin and the gang and the rest of the guys. So, you know, so stay tuned, folks. All right, guys. <laughs> we'll see you guys for episode five. Thank you very much for joining us. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Like the video and comment on the video and share the video. Let us know what you think of us, what you think of the shy, what do you want us to review after the shy, and we'll get back yeah. to you as soon as, soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching.